Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now the origin of tonight's pattern is a little hazy. It was thought to have been created in the Ozarks in the 1950s as a bass fly, but Don Martinez of West Yellowstone, Montana really popularized it when he commercialized it in the 1950s. It stayed popular through the 70s. Now it has fallen out of favor a little bit throughout the rest of the country, but it's still popular down in the Smoky Mountains. That's why I'm including it in this series. So this fly can be fished as a wet fly, a nymph, even a streamer. So what exactly does it imitate? Well, as a nymph, it looks kind of like a, a large stonefly, maybe a dragonfly or damselfly nymph, or if you're tied in black, probably a helgramite. But Charles Brooks, in his 1988 book, Nymph Fishing for Larger Trout, called it an all-purpose nymph, and that's probably as good a categorization as anything. Now, in the research, I saw this tied in many different colors. The chenille was different colors, the hackle was different colors. About the only defining trait was the red tail. Almost all of them had a red tail. But this is a, a pretty simple fly. Most beginners will be able to handle this one. It can be a super effective fly, so I think you're gonna like it. So let's give it a shot right now. I'm gonna be tying this on a 3X long size eight nymph hook. I smashed the barb down there before I tied it. And I'm gonna be putting down some weighted wrap. This is 020. I'm gonna put it about the whole length of the hook. Okay, after you've got your weight down, put your thread. I'm using a black 70 denier UTC. I'll put a dam right behind the weight, take a few wraps over it, put a dam in the front, and then take the thread back to the tail. Now let's do the tail. You notice I didn't get a whole lot of a taper right there on the back. So I'm gonna try and fill that in with my tail. Now, this is just red, red wool yarn. It is a, I think it's a four strand wool yarn. So I'm gonna put it in right there and just try to use a little bit of that bulk to help fill in that gap. It's not a big deal because it is a big bulky chenille body. Okay, and it's not gonna be that long. We will fix that in a minute. Now the next component is our grizzly hackle. This is a dry fly hackle. The fly is weighted. It's not gonna float on top. But what you wanna do for this one, get a fairly, fairly good sized feather that has some longer barbs because these go well past the bend of the hook. Now I'm gonna tie it in with the, from the short end. That way the hackle fibers in the back will be just a little bit smaller than the ones in the front. So what we do here I'm going to tie it in with, with the, the tip of the feather pointing forward. And I'll snip this off in just a second. But you see that it is the feather is tied in not all the way back to the tail. And I'll show you why. Because the chenille body, we're going to take one wrap behind this hackle when we wrap it. So take about six inches of medium chenille. You want to pull a little bit off, get your catch in point right here. And now be careful here. You don't want that first wrap too far up, and then the second wrap would be on top of it. That would just, it would create an, an unnecessary lump back there. So after you got that caught in, bring your thread up here. And now's the time if you want to. Go ahead and you know finish up this little taper right here. Not that necessary. I don't think you're gonna be able to notice it as bulky as this fly is. So take your chenille. You might need to move the grizzly to the side and get this first wrap behind the hackle. Try not to trap these fibers here. Probably won't notice if you trap a couple of them but wrap this on up, touch and turn side by side, just all the way up to the front. Okay, when you've got it up to the front, go ahead and secure this one off. Get out of the way there, Grizzly. I'm gonna put two wraps on this right here before 
snipping this chenille off. Now this, this cord inside this chenille is kind of thick, so just be careful that you don't trim what you don't want to trim. So I'm just going to bury that a little bit right there. Get my thread where I want to finish off this hackle. Okay, so this grizzly just, I'm just going to pull it back right there. And what I've been doing is just kind of preening these back as I wrap them around. Now you don't need to counter wrap this. You can wrap it the same way you did the chenille. And when you do that, it will naturally fall in some of these grooves. Now, open spiral wraps. So after you get the, the hackle up to the top, up to the front, a couple of tight wraps to secure this. Let's see, I'm going to go with three. Okay, that's caught in pretty well. Reach in here and snip this about as close as you can get it right here. Now we'll build our head. Just pull these back couple more securing wraps right there. I want to take it right back up to the eye and then I'll build my ramp back up. I think we can finish it. We're not done yet. There's a couple more steps left, so don't go anywhere, folks. Now, you see that tail? That four strand wool tail? Let's go ahead and cut it not to size, but maybe just in half to give us a, that's, it's still going to be a little bit shorter than that, but that will just make it easier to unwind and then fluff it out. So you see that we've got four strands right there. And what you can do here, you can either take your bodkin and start poking it through like this. And it'll take you a little while. Or if you've got one of these, you know, $8 toothbrushes from Hairline. Just, just start fluffing this out. It's fairly fluffy. I could get it a little bit more fluff, but in the interest of time, I will just show you the last step. Pull it tight and cut it just a little bit longer than you think it's going to be. It's still just a little sliver of a tail, but it'll bounce back a little bit. So there you go. You might want to fluff that up a little bit more. And obviously, a drop of head cement on this thing. Or UV resin in my case. Drop it on and spin it around. What you can do if you've got a, a fast rotary, oftentimes I will just give it a quick spin to help smooth out that head cement right there. Then I will put my torch on it. You got one little crazy fiber right there. But you know what? It's not an Instagram fly. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to harden it up and put it in my fly box. So there you go, folks. The Woolly Worm. Another pattern very effective in the Smoky Mountains. It's effective all over the place. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.